Hello and welcome to day nine of Summer in Sea Tangles. I love these days four, nine and 16 because then I can make a nice mosaic of the tiles I've finished so far. Today I will tangle Zentangle Tangle Narfellow. It's really like um, sea waves and it starts with the wavy line and then you just add, it's almost like aura line, parallel lines that follow the same uh, pattern of movement like this. And they can be thinner or thicker, um, of course. So, you know, you can make them the way that you want. And then you will join these waves together in a way that they will form um, these, oops, like pockets, let's say. I can see this uh, part, it's somewhere off the tile, so I just um, drew it the way that I could. And then, of course, you need one on the opposite side. And I turned the tile upside down before because for me it's kind of easier to repeat the same stroke and do the pattern. And you can see that I have these, um, this Ogi grid, uh, the pattern, um, that then I'm going to fill in. But this is basically Narfello. This is what Narfello is. And then you can choose whichever way you prefer to draw it. And it's very similar to Tangle Medusa by Thomas Padros, which I might also uh, show you in the upcoming days. So now it's time to choose how to, um, how to fill these. And I think I will add, I'm not sure actually what I'll do, let's see. I will fill first a few of them with some lines and then maybe I will do something else. Um, let's do at least another one, maybe even more with these lines. I don't want to have a straight line in the middle, so this is why I'm doing these kind of uh, curvy ones. I think they just look better with this. I will add another one, maybe also a few more. You know, there's no reason <laughs> not to make them all exactly the same. Of course, you might maybe wish to add some embellishments, like some orbs in certain parts or sections. So now you can really just leave it to your imagination to decide what to do with these and how much embellishments or how many embellishments you uh, want to add. Do you want to keep it very simple or maybe try to make it look very visually appealing, interesting and also um, full of whatever details you decide to add. So this is maybe one way and then another way you can also see Zentangle's deconstruction. What they did is they added an aura line inside and then filled that aura line either with um, orbs like I did in this central part or maybe with even more aura lines and then perhaps also color this central one with uh, black ink. But somehow I feel that for shading, it would be better to um, add shades either to these um, edges on the left and on the right side, or maybe, and maybe to add uh, some highlights in the central part. This is why I'm not inking in the central um, shape that I draw with these aura lines. 
and you can see that each of those are different uh, because it doesn't have to be like either symmetric or exactly the same you can add variety to them now you decide how to um, shade it as i said you can decide to shade maybe let's let's do this it seems like the maybe most logical for me thing to do and another thing uh, because these are drawn in the way that they are um, the thickest part of one is right next to these this these corners which are shaded and this by itself will give it some more um, contrast because you will have the highlighted part in the middle and then the shaded part in the corners but if you look vertically they will be just next to each other the heaviest shades and the shiniest highlights which is what creates contrast after you add shades i see that i missed one with the uh, pencil then you need the blending stamp and with these small circular movements you can just spread shades towards the center without even going into the very corner which will remain the darkest of them all i mean of all <laughs> these sections where the shades were applied trying not to um skip any of these but usually it happens to me that i do skip something just because i tend not to be very uh, structured in my approach either to dra uh, drawing or shading i tend to jump from one place to another um, to jump from one thing to another to kind of break the monotony of um, doing things in in like very predictable predictable sequences so this is what how i skipped this one as well and now you can see there's already some body and volume and i will actually add highlight to the top part of these waves and then i will blend it and see i will blend it through the middle and see if I also want to add it to the bottom side. I'm not sure now. So I will start from the top and after I blend it, I will decide. You can always, when you shade and highlight, you can always do that um, kind of in layers, not necessarily layers so that you apply something over something you've done, but if you're not sure what's the best solution you start with something that's like most obvious and then you can add more after you like take a second like i i do now just to observe this and see if you think now it would benefit from some highlights on the bottom but i'm actually not sure i will go to the jelly roll 10 to add these shiniest highlights just several dots on the top of each of these waves um, to bring out this part which kind of if i imagine that there would be some light would be highlighted like this and you know i could do the bottom part too but because of the fact uh that these are um, placed right above these two corners each of them are placed be between the two corners that are shaded there's already contrast between these and this part so i think i will leave it at this but you can maybe try what happens if you also apply highlights to the bottom part and i'm sure 
that the result will be great too. Finally, I will draw the name of the tangle. Again, thank you for drawing with me and I will see you in two days. Bye.